Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Susan Pleasant, and it is my privilege to be with you this morning and worship with you this morning. If we could, let us read together uh, the call to worship. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Let us act justly. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. Let us love tenderly. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Let us walk humbly with our God. May we see Christ in one another, that, that we, we may be leaders and peacemakers in Christ's, Christ's name. All right, we're going to sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus in your hymnal on page 170, because he first loved me, right? <laughs> Sure, you all love one another. 
And I am so pleased to be here today, so privileged to be here today to share with you in your worship service. And I want to thank you for that. Uh, Pastor Ted says that uh, my title is um, Director of Congregational Care because the title they originally gave me was too long to put on a card that I could hand out to people. So we kind of decreased that uh, title to something that was more manageable. But again, I am so privileged and pleased to be here with you today. And Tina. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There's kind of a few announcements I want to bring up to everybody. Um, last night we had our trunk or treat. It was very successful. I think we said we had probably about 70 children come through. And that's just children. That doesn't inc include the parents that brought them. Um, it was very successful. I think our last group came through around 6.45. Um, I think that's when Gunnar got his last round in. So we did have a good time. We had 13 cars, um, which was, was great. So it's only going to get better from here. So I think everyone participated. Um, we did raise over $40, Pam? $44. $44 for the cleaning buckets and Encore, and so that's more than enough to put half a bucket together. So, And speaking of buckets, um, Pastor Barbara said she's got the bags here that we can um, put towards the, the cleaning buckets. That we, if we have some more cleaning supplies, we can um, get them started. Um, Monday the 4th is a Pastor Parish Relations meeting. It's, it starts at 6. So anyone who's on that committee, just mark your calendars for that. And I, I, I got Steve to get me a bag out, and I didn't bring it up here. But Chris, can you hold up that red bag? We got bags for our Thanksgiving, um, our Thanksgiving meals that we're going to put together. And Danielle did a great job getting it all together. Um, we got the box over here. So when we start bringing our Thanksgiving um, bags together, we're all going to put them in these nice reusable bags and um, we got extras for anything else that we're going to be working on throughout the year so thanks again Danielle for doing that. Um, we will, uh, looking at the calendar, Advent starts on December the 1st. I know it's over a month away but um, not, it's just around the corner. We'll be decorating for Advent November the 30th, that Saturday. We'll start around 9, 9.30 so anyone who can help with that. Just mark your calendars for that. Um, let's see, anything else? No. Does anyone else have any other announcements to bring up? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. If you would look in your bulletin, we'll pray together the prayer of illumination. Lord, open, open our hearts, hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with your word what you say to us today. Amen. If you would rise, and today we're going to, in the United Methodist Hymnal, on page 769, we will do Psalm 34, response 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The poor cried out, and the Lord heard and saved them out of all their troubles. The poor. Oh, I'm sorry. I read the wrong part. Forgive me. Look to God in the radiance, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor cried out, and the Lord heard, and they saved them out of all their troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. 
O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear God have to want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord have good things. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. We should be desirous of life and covet so many days to enjoy good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. All right. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. All right, now we are going to, and I apologize for messing that up, but I'm so used to being on the other end of that, that uh, I was going to read your part too. So if you would, now we'll turn into page 351, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, 
may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. All right, my message today is called, Is Love Your Default? And I want to start off by talking to you about a movie that was uh, around in 1996. And I think there are some of you that out there that should remember this movie. It was called Jerry Maguire. All right? And Jerry Maguire, of course, was played by Tom Cruise. And Jerry Maguire was an agent in Sports Management International. And he worked to get money for all of his clients. More money and more money, right? And more perks. And he worked really hard until one day there was an event that caused him to have a moral epiphany. And he decided that maybe the sports management business was a little dishonest. Maybe it was not as good as he thought it was, and maybe he should pay more attention to his clients and the well-being of his clients and how much he cared about his clients and how much he loved his clients, and that went over not so well with the rest of the agents, and definitely not with the CEO. And of course, Jerry Maguire, he was fired. And he thought, well, I'll get a bunch of my clients to go with him, but there was only one client that was willing to go with him. And that client was a rude, mouthy, obnoxious, wide receiver. And his name was Rod Tidwell, and he was played by Cooper Gooding Jr. And what was, just think back to 1996, what was the quote that came from that movie. Show me the money. Show me, and we often used it back in 1996, I'm sure, too. Show me the money. Well, you might be asking yourself, well, what does this have to do with the scripture of today and with, with the message of today? Well, I would like to look at the scripture, and instead of sh saying, show me the money, I would like to change that up to something that y'all are familiar with. Show me the love. Show them the love. Very important. In this scripture we learn Jesus' objective, his goal, his target, what he wants to accomplish, his strategies, and the tactics that he will use in order to accomplish his goal. Some look at these verses as a planning session with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but I look at it as what I once was, a teacher for 15 years. And any of you that have known a teacher or might have been a teacher yourself or are a teacher, know that what, what do we have to do? We have to do those lesson plans. And when we do those lesson plans, we have to state our goal, our objective, or the target that we want to accomplish. And after doing that, we've got to list the tactics. How, what are we going to use? What are the things we're going to do to accomplish 
those goals, to meet that goal. And the final most important thing, of course, in the equation is the assessment. Did we indeed accomplish what we set out to do? Did we reach the goal? This scripture represents the Last Supper. It's where Jesus begins speaking to God. And he's praying not only for the disciples, but for the work that they are about ready to go out and do. And for the people that they will be talking to. And for the message that he hopes they will be delivering to each one of those individuals. We see in this prayer unity with the Father, with the Son, and with the believing community. We see in verses 21 and 23 the objective or the goal. What was God's goal? To reach the world. The world. In 23 it says, then the world will know that you have sent me. And the objective is to spread that word of God and the love of Jesus Christ to all who will hear and believe. The target is the world. The people around us. Not just their families, not just their friends, but the people around us, the people beyond, like with your trunk or tree. I heard your pastor last week say that we're not thinking about just getting the people here at the church, but we're thinking about getting the people out there on 218 to come in. We had our trunk or tree yesterday, too, and I was amazed at the number of faces that, of people that I didn't know. And thank God for that. That was the purpose, to draw those people in. So the strategy is to reach this goal is the creation of a family or a community of oneness, a shared life of men and women that through the rebirth into the life with Christ, we end into a relationship with one another based on love, joy, faithfulness, and service. So much that others will wonder what is, what is giving those people there that love. I thought about, and, and I thought it might have been in the Christmas Carol, but I, I, I'm not sure it is. But I think about scenes where we have seen this cold winter night, and we have seen people on the outside kind of looking in to this warm scene of a family with love and sharing and the burning fire and these people standing on the outside looking in are saying, what is it that they have that looks so good? What is it that they have that looks so great? They're standing there with wonder in their eyes and that wishing or that longing that that's on their faces as they gaze into that community of warmth inside. This is where we let others see Jesus in us, through us, and in our actions, the way we live our lives, and how we treat others and respond to the situations in our lives and the lives of others. In verse 22 and 23, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them, and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. As disciples of Jesus, how then do we create this unity, this shared life? What tactics can we use? I, sometimes we have to go out of our comfort zone. I remember the bishop that we once had, Sharma Lewis, I believe it was, that said, um, take it to the streets. When Pastor Ted first came to Tabernacle Church, he talked about doing Christmas carols outside the local bars, singing Christmas carols, and I'm going, do what? It's definitely would have been out of my comfort zone. But sometimes we do have to step out of that comfort zone. We have to go beyond these doors. We are a church family, and we feel good with one another, but sometimes we have to go beyond. We have to go out there because that's, those are the people we need to reach. Those are the people that we need to show the love. 
I came across a Sunday sermon one time, and the question that the minister asked of the people was, how many people do you like? Think about that for a minute. How many people do you, do you like? What if your answer is, I like only a few people, the carefully selected individuals that are around me? With our human flaws, our self-centeredness, sometimes it's difficult to say that we will like everyone, much less love everyone. Think about some of your occasions. Um, I live on Route 3. And sometimes in that traffic, it's difficult to think with, about other drivers with loving thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know how 218 is, but... It's worse. Oh, it is? Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, it, it's hard to think of those people with loving thoughts sometimes. Um, and I know we've all known people that you look at them and you go, How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Sometimes I've needed an attitude adjustment too. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you all have too. But sometimes we need attitude adjustments because sometimes we just can't stand some of the people that we meet. I'm guilty of first impressions sometimes. Not good. Not good. Sometimes you have to get to know someone. So we all need to come out of our comfort zones. Sometimes we need to see with our hearts so that we can display compassion, forgiveness, kindness, and meet the needs of others. We have to come out of our comfort zones and go into places or out to places. But look at Jesus. Look at all the places he went. Definitely places that I think probably would be out of our comfort zone. Jesus taught us the golden rule, right? Matthew 7, 12, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Not always easy. Not always easy. Sometimes it's pretty difficult to follow. But what if we upped the ante and we suggested that we live by the platinum rule? <coughs> The platinum rule to me is John 13, 3, where it says, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you may also love one another. This means Jesus did not die just for our families, for our friends, for our loved ones, for the people around us. He didn't die for just those individuals. He died for everyone. He died for all of the world, even those who were difficult to like, much less love. Consider the scripture from 1 John 4, 7 through 8, which says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Think about John 13, 3 through 5, and 12 and 15, where Jesus humbles himself. What does he do? What is he doing in those chapters? He's washing the feet of the disciples, the dirty, dusty feet of the disciples. He's not sitting on a throne. He's on his hands and knees doing what a servant would normally do to show that he's willing to humble himself, that he's willing to serve others. Jesus says, do for one as I have done for you. Again, the community of life shaped by his love. You know, the Bible is full of parables about loving one another, no matter the cost. I don't know about you, but one of the obvious ones to me is the Good Samaritan. And in the Good Samaritan, we see that a man has been beaten, Stripped of his identity, bloody, left on the side of the road to die. No one to help him. What does the Jewish priest and the Levite do? Walk on by. 
and they walked by on the other side, the opposite of the road, so that they wouldn't even have to be near him. But the Samaritan, and it's important to remember, he was stripped of his identification, right? Because the good Samaritan cleaned him up, cleaned his wounds, patched him up, put him on the donkey and took him into town and set him up at the inn to recover and said, I will come back in the morning to the innkeeper and I will pay you whatever costs are incurred by this person that was left to die on the side of the road. Well, which one of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Of course, this story teaches us that we should love one another, even our enemies. As a Christian or a disciple, we are obligated to love people. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. In Romans 13, 18, it is our duty or purpose or promise. We are bound to love one another. We each make the commitment to bless and serve the poor, the sick, and the distressed. So if we are to reach our objective, to take God's word into the world, we have to make love our default. Andy Stanley um, is um, someone that I like to read his books a lot, and I teach some of his, um, his um, studies. He's a speaker, he's an author, he's the pastor of North Point Ministries. Andy Stanley says, when unsure of what to say or do, ask what love requires of you. We can also keep in mind John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. Think just for a minute, what would it have been like to live with Jesus, to have been someone like John and to have walked with Jesus. Yes, I know the life would have been difficult. I know it would have been hard. I know it would have been dangerous. I know I would have been afraid of many times. But I just think about what it would have been like to have seen the love in his eyes. To, to have seen the things that he did in the name of love. To see all the people flocking to him. To see the miracles that he performed. I think that might make us understand better that the default truly does need to be love. According to the Apostle Paul, God's Spirit will always nudge us in the direction of kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. When in doubt, max those out. Genuine Christian love is not built on emotion alone. But there does have to be emotion, right? Because we have to sense things that people need. Love means we must have contact with others. We must have mutual concern for one another that is not superficial, and we need community with one another. This ability to love is given to each of us through Jesus Christ. If Christ is in us, his love is in us. We must be the conduit or the channel of his love. Our daily tactics have to be reaching the blinded, confused world outside with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. For in this way, we can find our heart and soul, even in the climate of today, even on Route 3, even when we have to go to difficult places, even when we have to be with difficult people, even, even when we have to do difficult things. The final task is the assessment of how well we are doing. And I heard you all say Trumpet Street was a success. That's doing well. Ours was a success too. 
the buckets, all of the things that you're doing with, with the, the hurricane victims, reaching out to those who suffer from the hurricanes, the floods, all of the many missions that I'm sure that you do. But think of this. God's not finished with us yet. There's a contemporary song, I won't sing it for you, but it talks about it. God's not finished with me. I got a lot more to do, just as we all do. So God's not finished with us yet. And it says in Philippians 1, 6, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I read an article by Dr. Harold England of the First Presbyterian Church in Berkeley, and he said something that I thought was a little harsh, but it does apply to the decline of Christianity. He said, do you suppose this absence of love is a clue to our lack of effectiveness in making Christ known in our world? The supply of love within the family of God has run low, and as a consequence, the church has presented its face to the world as just another of those impersonal institutions of our day, majoring in morality and public worship instead of presenting itself as a family where the members know one another, accept one another, pray with one another, laugh and weep with one another, and all because they genuinely love one another. I'm sure that is the way you all feel about your congregation. That is the way I feel about my congregation. I don't know where I would be without the love of my church family and the guidance and the direction of my church family, just as I'm sure you all have had situations where you know that being a part of this church family is very important. But God's not finished with us yet. We still have much more to do. We're here for a reason. He has equipped each of us to be his instrument, and there is still much to do, so do as John Wesley would say, all the good we can, by all the means we can, in all the ways we can, in all the places we can, at all the times we can, to all the people we can, as long as we ever can. <coughs> if you would bow your heads with me. Father, we ask this day to equip us all with a spirit of willingness that we with courage can witness about you by the profession of our mouths and through our way of living. Grant us all to partake in your strength and joy so that we can enter into the anxiety and suffering of the world to radiate and make alive that hope which Christ gives. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. If you would stand with me now, we will have the affirmation of faith, with the, which is the Nicene Creed, printed on in your hymnal on 8 a.m. Yes, 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 yes. 
spoke with Diane yesterday she said that uh, Burkett is in the hospital uh, he's doing he's doing well but uh, asked for continued prayers from the congregation and um, also I just want to praise everyone again for all the uh, participation in the trunk retreat and especially to the community that came out and uh, showed the support Yes, I did a powerful lot of praying for your pastor too, because I thought maybe she would be able to come back to <laughs> I told her, I said, um, I even have my prayer warriors praying for you too. heads with me, please, and we'll pray for these people. Dear Lord, we are yours. Use us this day as your instrument of life. Give us strength to walk in your path and faith to step beyond our comfort zone. Let us sing your praises, teach of your wonders, and shine your light through our actions 
that all will know and see what it is like to have you in our lives. Lord, we list people for you today. We have spoken their names. We have spoken about their conditions. And Lord, we ask that you, in your awesome way, touch the hearts of each and every individual, keep them safe, wrap them in your loving arms, and bring them home safely from their travels, bring them home safely and in good health from the hospital, keep them, Lord, wrapped in every way so that they know that you are walking every step of the way with them. Lord, we also praise you for the wonderful things that are going on in this church, Trump Retreat. Lord, it was a blessing. Apparently there were numbers of individuals that hopefully were touched by you. Those faces on the window looking in hopefully will be those faces that come into the church. So Lord, we know that there are many more individuals that could be on our list today. And we know that you, as the awesome God, the great healer that you are, that you know each and every one of those names, and that, Lord, you know what they need, and you know how to take care of them, and you know how to answer the needs. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to come into this church, the privilege to come into this church, and worship you openly, to pray to you openly. Lord, we thank you for that, and we thank you for the so many gifts and graces that you give to each and every one of us every single day. Lord, we are thankful for that too. But Lord, we are so thankful for the gift of the prayer that you taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, if the ushers would come forward, please.
Thank you for these gifts. Thank you for these times. We thank you in your precious name. Amen.
for Barbara choosing these hymns. But we're going to sing Wonderful Words of Life on page 660. Thank you. 